well I'm sitting in the lineup of trucks and no it's not the border even though it looks like what you usually see at the border no we are lined up to blue beacon track wash because I'm loading tomorrow and I just I cannot show up like this at, at the shipper because uh, actually I discovered while uh, leafing through my paperwork I thought it was a brand new machine this uh, shuttle wagon turns out uh, it where I'm taking it is the owner so the owner sent this shuttle wagon to the factory where they make them in Kansas City Missouri for overhauling right so it should be pretty much looking like new right because it's a factory refurbished uh, machine and you know I have so much dirt and you know now of course it's melting because it's plus one or 33 F but you know I went through Wyoming I went through Northern Ontario I was in Alberta right and uh, I should have found something in Alberta but it would be you'll be dirty now anyway so tomorrow they say it's gonna rain and then there can be a chance of snow but I just wanna I just wanna show up at the plant you know with a clean trailer um, so uh, some guy just text me like you know they never say any name right the guy just says uh, you just passed Ames Iowa like how do you answer that you know like the guy says hey this is you know Billy I'm your big YouTube fan did you just pass this town no the guy says you one one letter you you know it's like in uh, what they use in texting you just passed P-A-S-T passed <laughs> Ames, Iowa and I'm like who is this? are you the police? <laughs> and the guy types nope just happened to be uh, to me heading north on 35 they looked over at the southbound lanes and happened to notice a low boy with a jeep on the deck and i just thought that i wonder if that's the captain oh yeah and then he writes down his name dave a fan and i say yeah it was me if there was a booster in the back i went to the blue beacon to get the salt of the rig loading in kansas city tomorrow didn't want to show up at the ship of this dirty so now if you're ready just don't don't die on me okay don't have a heart attack but I'm gonna show you what the rig looks like after I delivered in Thunder Bay the worst part was driving to uh, Dorian Ontario like it was the salt they use there, I don't know, some kind of industrial strength 25th century salt, you know. And then on the way back, I went on the same Ontario 61. Very ugly highway in terms of dirt, right? And so over here it was okay. Once I entered uh, Minnesota, I think it was okay. Like roads were like this pretty much. And then I started this morning at, uh, sorry, I started at about minus eight Celsius. And I couldn't sleep, it's hot, you know, I was running the truck and then I stopped the truck, then it starts beeping, low battery, so I said, screw this. It was like 4.30 in the morning, I go to the truck stop, the quick fill, I said, uh, are we allowed to sit at those tables over there? They said, yeah, because nobody's wearing any masks. So I grabbed the coffee and these guys had Americano, like you can get espresso and then make your own Americano, just, you know, add hot water. It was beautiful. And I said, do you have any plugins for the laptop? She says, yeah, right at the tables over there. So I went in, started my uh, internet on the phone and used my laptop. And what I needed to do is I got lazy yesterday. I ordered the permits because I double-checked the uh, shuttle wagon uh, website 
for this particular model and then I added a couple of inches for the width for the height you know a couple of thousand pounds for the weight so I think I should be good except of course now my permits will be expensive but what do you do basically I'm asking them for 20 times 9 180,000 pounds because you know I'm 74 and they say that thing is 102 right that's already 176 and so I rounded up just I said give me 20k per each axle so this way this way nobody will get hurt and of course I want to load because in the front I have three axle truck and tandem Jeep so five axles but in the back I only have four uh, I'll have to load closer to to the truck and this thing is like 25 feet long 10 feet 2 inches wide but 12 tall and you see that I already bought some timbers according to the specs they told me to buy six pieces of tonnage cut for like look at this see? that's from Ontario see? that's what I want to get rid of I want to get rid of this this stuff look it's just sand you know <laughs> I bet you don't see trucks this dirty. Like, look at this. Man. You can hardly make out the word Fontaine on this. You see this? And that's why I want to clean the deck because I don't want this stuff to be on the deck. Like, look at the chains. Man, it's like half an inch of dirt. Look at this. See this? Like I'm not making this up. Now, you know, you know me, right? I don't I don't wash the truck too often, but this is not acceptable. two lanes right because there's two spots where they can wash you and this lane started moving faster and this guy in the back there behind me some kind of a old RV on the chassis of a cargo van he was in that lane and then he saw me move we were moving pretty good because probably there's a couple of bobtails in front of there they were a couple of bobtails and so they washed them two or three at a time right so bobtails are much easier and so he shifted here and now he saw me doing a video <laughs> now he's probably regretting his decision because washing this baby will take a long time but did you see how much dirt was there like it's unbelievable and that's what I remember when I went through northern Ontario on the way to Alberta with that uh, pipe layer I'm I, I could feel how heavy the truck and trailer became because it was that uh, sand plus ice and the ice and sand they were like you know super hard and so I hope they can they can wash it off because yeah it's just too much sand I'm guessing that's what they use they put it down on their on the ice and snow right and so this definitely have to be cleaned 
because it's extra weight and then things will start uh, rusting. By the way, I bought this next load, so I posted a picture in the community uh, section. And um, so what this is, it's a, it's a, it's a machine they use to move railroad cars when they don't have uh, or maybe they don't want to use a big locomotive right so this thing can go anywhere because it has tires like it, it has regular wheels and then it has railroad wheels and they're saying that this thing despite a small size but because uh, the movement the traction comes from the uh, rubber tires it has much more torque Actually, I checked the uh, specs. It's nothing, nothing to write home about. Like this thing has about 1,000 torque and just 300 horsepower. But this particular machine that I'm picking up, you know, they classify them by how many cars they can pull. Like the biggest one can pull 60 cars, I think. Then there's 40 cars and then the baby one is like it can pull 20 cars and so mine is right in the middle mine is called uh, shuttle wagon 8040 so it can pull 40 cars 40 fully loaded cars and that's what's surprising about these machines is because they use the rubber tires for propulsion they actually much stronger you know then they look they can pull a lot because because of that whereas if it was uh you know a regular locomotive it only has steel wheels right so it needs a lot of power and it has to be heavy otherwise the wheel the wheels will just keep spinning right and so yeah this is an interesting machine and also what's cool is that they can just lift they can lift the railroad wheels and it can just drive to a different side uh, of the factory or something, right? So these are very, you know, interesting machines. Uh, and, and yeah, somebody asked if this is the load I was talking about uh, before. And yeah, it was, but but back then, back then they, they, they were not sure what they were doing and then I talked to a friend of mine and he said, no, you cannot load it yourself, you need a crane or you need a rail trailer. And so this guy swears, now this, the same agent, he swears to me, they move them all the time like this on regular, on the regular uh, trailers and he sent me all kinds of you know directions how there's a special instruction how to load because i'm supposed to load myself which i don't understand why would i load myself at the factory maybe they have some kind of crazy policy kind of like richie brothers where they're not allowed to but it's their it's their product you know it's their product so anyway maybe it's just for unloading but they send me specific instructions uh, how to start the machine how to operate it is like two pages, you know double spaced no big deal uh, And then they send me uh, dimensions and instructions what kind of damage I have to bring And I copied it and this morning I found where I was sitting in this all one hour whatever uh, Just south of a couple of hours south of st. Paul I searched for Home Depot and there was one in this like 30 miles south of me on the same I-35 <coughs> and I looked on Google Maps it, it looked the property looked pretty big and so yeah I was able to get in get out and I went inside you know what one thing I like is that they don't charge you <coughs> They don't charge you for cutting the wood, right? They just charge you as if you're buying, let's say I bought three, three boards, 12 inches wide, and that's all they charge you for. I like that. Yeah, 
and so I got that and then my sorry and then my uh, next thing I needed to do I wanted to do I didn't even realize I had so much dust on the trailer but now you saw I thought I would really you know want to even though you, you know I was thinking like program minimum would be just to clean the deck you know because yeah this is gonna be expensive truck trailer booster cheap yeah, and of course they always start arguing with you oh the deck will be extra I could never understand that you see like this guy right next to me washing that is no extra charge washing my trailer is always extra charge I said why I don't have walls like a driving trailer it has walls right like 13 6 tall like you don't consider that uh, extra extra work but why do you consider washing the deck of a low boy trailer extra and I'm guessing that their, their argument would be well we charge extra when we have to wash the floor inside the driver yeah but I don't have walls like you're not washing well I do have like maybe what half a foot in there right but anyway uh, I'm not arguing with these people I know they will charge me probably like by the minute or something like they put you know five six guys on it and let's say it takes them I don't know 20 minutes because uh, you know the pressure's good it's not gonna take them that long I don't need it to be show quality uh, you know I just want to get get rid of that dirt and, uh, and that's it I don't know if I'll have time to go inside the truck stop I want to grab something to eat to munch on something while I'm driving because from here it's still 212 miles to Kansas City Missouri but I, I told the broker for some reason my broker wants updates twice a day by phone so I emailed him I said are you sure like normally I just send one email in the morning and calling like who's calling and he says well no that's just Landstar ma makes us add that you know text in there in the rate confirmation he says I don't care about calls he says if you can give me an update at least once a day it would be okay because you know why I got concerned because right there it says uh, Landstar reserves the right to charge the carrier $50 for every missed check-in call what so let's say if my if my uh, trip is four days long so I'm supposed to make eight calls right and let's say I missed six they're gonna charge me 300 bucks deducted from the and so you know always make sure you read the entire rate confirmation and so the guy says no 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 that's not me he says don't worry about that that's Lansta corporate okay uh, but I remember he still wanted to have two email updates and so I just sent him another one I said uh, arrived in Des Moines Iowa lined up at the truck wash to get the trailer washed because it's 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 too dirty might have some issues at the factory and I said I bought the damage will advise tomorrow we should be sometime there I said I'm still 212 miles away uh, this probably will take like two hours total so I am not sure I might just drive hold on let me check here I got my uh... truck path here so let's see we're in Des Moines Iowa right how far are that's what I like I usually know I it knows my position right and then I just look for a truck stop somewhere like two hours away like 112 miles 110 miles 120 miles 
and it looks like there's a Eagleville truck parking but that's not a truck stop There's a state line Conoco. Right at the border with Missouri. Mm, how big is it? 59 spots. Okay. Yeah, this looks pretty big. Let me see. I like it when they have sides like this where you can go and park on the side. Eagleville, Missouri. Okay, let's just check. Uh, Eagleville, Missouri. How far is that to shuttle wagon? 113 miles. Oh, perfect. I think I'll I'll go to this. Eagleville, Missouri. Uh oh, oh, hold on. understand what he wanted to do I think he wanted to he wanted to bring a truck in the middle of something I don't know but anyway so my uh, my thing still holds look at this this thing is now kind of like almost molded to that's my new bracket right it's a bit moving like this but everything is super tight there and it doesn't rattle Okay, let me just put in here. Uh, so it's called uh, State Line Conoco. Okay, let's put it in. And that would just leave me State Line say the town name was uh, Eagleville okay and of course I, I lost okay Eagle oh I think it found it mm, yeah it's right at the border 149 kilometers wait is that possible this thing said I was oh yeah 92 miles okay so yeah that's good yeah, no, I don't want to drive too much after this because I already did a lot you know I got Danage now I'm washing the truck. I ordered the permits in the morning, right? I still probably have to print out my uh, Did he send me a bill of leading? I don't think so So I better make up a bill of leading And uh, print it out so I can 
I can show it show it uh, show it to the shipper tomorrow I think the guy's waiting for me but I cannot move I'm so long like my rear booster sticks out there yeah that guy from the truck wash he's there in the back just asking everybody to keep to the left as much as possible um, well yeah so I decided that's why I decided to do this video to show you guys the difference even though these guys will all know they don't do kind of like a show quality uh, wash but you will see the difference uh, even though if it lasts till tomorrow only that's all I care about I, I just want the shipper to be happy you know because it's a super expensive machine you know these uh, shuttle wagons are very expensive and they even took out uh, lands that took out uh, extra insurance and they sent me proof of extra insurance because I said my cargo is my cargo insurance is only good for half a million bucks and I think that's Canadian right because I'm with the Canadian uh, company but I don't know maybe it becomes US currency in the States I don't know and so the guy sent me a uh, extra insurance for like 700,000 US and that's why sometimes you don't need a lot of insurance because the shipper or the broker they're so rich that they can just take out take out see fuel pumps are empty I wonder how much is fuel over here but I'm definitely coming back because yeah after they wash me I'll do a quick walk around show you the new look of the truck and then I'm gonna go inside park somewhere and just run buy some food and keep tracking to this to this place yeah Conoco so it'll It'll only take me probably an hour and a half, so 150 kilometers. And then tomorrow I'll get up probably at like 5.30 local time, I'm on Central now. Start driving at 6. And I should be at the ship or some, sometime after 8. Okay. Yeah, some kind of a weird trailer, Thraxel trailer, and then he's pulling something. Another trailer, and the neck is like what three, six, eight. So you use eight axles on the trailer, on two trailers, and then four axle truck. Wow, that's massive. He's probably holding one of those um, wind blades or something. All right, the door is open. So the next victim is about to come in. And now look at these other guys, right? Like, look at this guy. <laughs> like this Titan Freight. He's a, a, as clean as a whistle, you know? Like, if you wanna, if you wanna see a dirty truck, you just send everybody to Captain Sergei's truck. That's dirty, when you have sand you know half an inch of sand on everything that's dirty but these guys over here I don't know okay this guy is dirty in the back right like this uh, truck is dirty the pop tail took a very long time well waiting was long because of the lineup because today is a nice day right so everybody wants their truck clean but also my rig was so dirty right uh, they charged it by the minute for the trailer and the jeep and then the booster and the truck were regular rigs and so 
So total I paid uh, 177 bucks US. So they asked me to they asked me to pull forward because they couldn't reach the booster before, and so now they're washing the booster.
pretty warm now. I'm gonna go inside and see if they sell DEF at the pump. Uh, I don't see any signs on the pump, so it should be okay because I'm, I'm sick and tired of paying 20 bucks, you know, for two gallons of DEF each time when you buy containers at the gas station. But before we do that, I wanted to show you the truck. So they clean up all the sand, the dirt. I know it's not going to be perfect, but at least I don't have the dirt anymore, and that's what I wanted. I want a clean deck for uh, you know for tomorrow's load. So this is good. So not crazy expensive, 177 bucks. Not too bad. <laughs> they're there but that's nothing because one trip through the snow it will look much much worse my battery is still okay but my uh, SD card shows like 45% but I still wanted to show you something like this flying J here that's why recently you know I've been trying to stay more at a small truck stops like this one next one I'm going to because it's less hectic you know and here the way this crazy place is done first of all there's no restaurant secondly there's a fuel island over there right where people pull in to get fuel on this side and on the other side of the building and then the doors are locked and it says go to the main entrance so even to prepay fuel or do whatever right you have to walk to the main building which is not that far but inside lots of room lots of room i got some spicy chicken it was pretty good spicy chicken sandwich mm, i got some def def was pretty expensive like over three dollars way over three dollars a gallon but finally have full tank of def but the worst part about this truck stop is that the entrance is over there like people come in this way to go either through the pump or to go through the scales right and they line up for the truck washes right here so facing in the opposite direction so when I came in in the couple of hours ago I'm like what the heck I couldn't figure out and there's two lanes so you have to so you have to uh, find a way to turn around somewhere there and that's what I did hold on I left my light in the back one all right so finally I'm ready to leave to get the, to the bottom of the state so it should, yeah, should take me probably well I'm driving slow so it'll probably take me two hours and when I was pulling into this spot from the rear I saw lots of debris and I stopped and I checked for nails found two nails on the ground and now this guy parked over here well there is actually a uh, In 200 meters, turn left onto there is a parking in there, but he's in the way of everybody. That's what, yeah, that's what I mean. So people come in from that side and you have to spin around somewhere if you want to do a wash. And today these guys are crazy busy. I don't know what's what it is about good weather that gets people's uh, minds onto onto truck wash, but 
So I go like this and then you come out out of here and that's what I did. When I came out, I just did a wide turn and I went back into the truck stop because I needed to get uh, deaf. And I went over there, I, I, I went to uh, across the street there. There's no no pedestrian crossing. It's kind of like one of popular Russian uh, comedy writers. He he had a joke. He said, "In the in the age of cars, the life of pedestrians is always in peril." And they are only allowed to cross streets at intersections where the thread by which the life of the pedestrian usually hangs is the easiest to cut. <laughs> Basically, yeah, once cars came onto the onto the scene, pedestrians lost importance. And so they're doing something here. It's look like they're renovating, but all the signs are gone from the... It looks like next door in the same building, but they used to have a, something, one of those pancake places or something. Under the bridge and I have to flip back because this is 80 East Use the middle lane to stay on North East I don't need that so we need to go 80 West to catch uh, I-35 South in 400 meters use the right lane to take the I-80 West ramp to US 65 South all those guys that's the ramp to I-80 East we're going to I-80 West actually it's interesting that my my permit broker is located in this town Des Moines and I was checking my phone because I ordered permits today right this morning And sometimes they would have questions for you, you know, like sometimes you're missing uh, your proof of insurance. And so I was checking my phone and there was nothing for a long time. And then finally I see a message, truck 305, you have to fill out this form for Missouri, a root survey. What? What root survey? So I call them, I call my permit broker and I say, uh, I'm sorry, I said, I couldn't read very well on the tiny screen there, you know, that huge document. Can you tell me what's going on? Like, why are we doing this survey? Uh, I'm not wide, I'm not too wide, I'm not too tall. I'm like 13, 10 tall, right? I'll be 10 too wide. So what's the problem? And she says, okay, hold on, let me... Once we hang up, let me call. Let me call the uh, the DOT office and ask them because it doesn't look like many of the things on this form uh, apply to you since you're not too wide, you're not too crazy tall. And she said, "I'll call you back." And then she calls me back and she says, yeah, you still need to do page one and page two of that form. And I said, okay, but I, I gotta start driving because I don't wanna drive after dark. I said, I'll fill it out 
when I'm when I shut down for the night but I said you probably won't see it until tomorrow morning and she said that's fine so now I gotta I gotta open this form on my computer and see what they want from me sometimes it's just you know some kind of a declaration saying that you solemnly swear that if you if you uh, damage the pavement or stuff like that or damage any structures that you're okay going to prison something to that effect you know I think once I was uh, somewhere in the northeast and the DOT from that particular state, I don't remember which state it was, but they wanted something from my insurance broker. Again, some kind of a, you know, confirmation that if any damage occurs, that somebody will pay. So now we're just following this beautiful road for 26 clicks to 35 south. But it was worth it, you know. I waited probably hour and a half in line to get washed and then I could tell the guy behind me was losing patience. Because I thought they were done with my truck, right? And then the guy says, Right, just pull forward. We did not wash yet the rear section. I said, what What rear section? He says, well, that thing on the, with the axle. I said, oh, booster. He says, yeah. So he says, if you, if you pull forward, we'll rinse that one off for you. But I'm super happy that the dirt is gone because it was just getting too much and my mirrors are so clean now man I just wonder how long they will last like this 